by the dose the system in 24 hours. So if they're still exposed to it, it's going to be, you know, maybe won't bind the first 24 to 48 hours, but then it'll start binding to them. So well, they could that... take a dose, 100 milligrams of iodine or so, uh, every two to three days to, you know, for two weeks or so. Doesn't it take time to bring the body back to iodine sufficiency when somebody is chronically deficient for years and years? Well, that's why we're talking about these these bigger doses, so the body can get a so you can overwhelm the sodium iodine symporter, and uh, it won't. It's only going to take up what you're putting in. So the smaller amounts from the nuclear from the radioactive iodine won't bind in the body. So you're just trying to overwhelm those those transport mechanisms with these larger doses of iodine. But if someone now someone who's already taking iodine on a daily basis has been taking it for a while, um, they're not going to need to do these big doses. Their body will be sufficient. They won't be able to find it. I would inc I would have them increase their dose, probably double their dose for two weeks beyond what they're normally doing. Um, and then to, you know, bring it back down to the normal level. But those who aren't taking it are going to need a larger dose. How about the different forms? Is, 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 there, there are different types of iodine that are available, and not everyone can get their hands on, you know, every right. one, one specific type. It doesn't seem like the government is uh, awake or aware and have a, a, the potassium iodide available, widely available. So what are the options of the different types of iodine? Well, the good news is potassium iodide has not been banned by our government, and that can be available even at health food stores. So many people can find that. And to take 100 milligrams or so of potassium iodide is just follow the label and dose it. Um, the other form of iodine is Lugol's iodine, which is a mixture of iodine and iodide. And one drop is 6.25 milligrams. So to get these doses, we're talking something like 16 drops. Um, would be 100 milligrams. Um, Iodorol is another form of iodine with 12.5 milligrams per tablet, so it would be eight tablets, um, would be 100 milligrams. Um, the, the, only, the only small worry with this is if for people that have an, uh, uh, a swollen thyroid or a goiter, if they have an autonomously functioning nodule and they take these big doses of iodine, that nodule can start kicking out too much thyroid hormone, they get nervous and jittery, and they're not going to be able to take out take those big doses. If it happens, they just need to lower their dose. Um, but that's the minority, and that doesn't happen very often, and um, that's, that's just not going to be a big factor for the vast majority of people. Are you familiar with the nascent iodine that I... Um, I uh -huh. yeah, what do you say, say about that in these dosages? Well... Look, I, in this case, iodine is iodine. I don't think it's going to matter so much what brand you take, although I would say that to take a mixture of iodine and iodide in a product such as Lugol's or Iodorol or, um, or Iodozyme HP is another form of mixture is a better choice because certain tissues of the body take up one form of iodine, certain take up another. You know, the breast take up iodine, where the, whereas the thyroid takes up iodide. Um, but... Nascent iodine is a good iodine product. My only concern with something like this is the doses, microgram doses, and it's just not going to protect the body. And you're going to have to use, I don't, I don't remember how many, uh, how, you know, the concentration of it, but to do the doses I'm suggesting people do, they're going to need, you know, a I lot. would assume most of the bottle in one dose. And <laughs> I don't, I don't not, have a not, bottle in front of me. Not quite, but yeah. Is the the uh, the nascent iodine that's in atomic form? So can the body uh, convert that to the iodine or iodide? Well, theoretically, the body converts. I was taught in medical school that the body can can oxidize or reduce the various forms of iodine to what it needs. So if the body requires the breast require more iodine, it can uh, oxidize iodide to iodine and the thyroid needs more iodide, it can reduce it to iodide. But in practice, I don't see that occur as well. Um, so that's why I've always recommended people to use a combination of iodine and iodide versus one form alone. Now, having said that, I think there's, there's 
I think that that's a true statement, at least from my experience, but I also think it's important for people to take iodine in any form. And I think mason iodine and iodosol, and there's various forms of smaller dosed iodine that are very helpful for a small group of people who are very sensitive to iodine or just sensitive people in general and have to take lower doses of everything. Um, and I also think taking iodine is important period. So if they're going to take, if I think taking nascent iodine or one of the other smaller doses of iodine is a good thing versus not taking iodine at all. But in the toxic world we live in, minus even this radiation exposure from Japan that's coming, but just from the bromines and uh, uh, the the chlorines and the fluorides that are all over the environment, our iodine requirements have just gone through the roof. And I think that the small doses of iodine that were probably fairly effective 20 years ago, in my experience, have not been as effective in present in our modern society. And I tried those smaller doses at first, um, and I just didn't see as good clinical results for the vast majority of patients as I do with the larger doses. And I think it's from the toxicity issue, and here's another toxicity, you know, coming through the through the uh, not the clouds through the uh, jet stream, you know, that's going to hit us over time. What about the other forms of um, radiation toxicity, the cesium and the plutonium and the iodine is only protective for the radioactive iodine. How about the that's, other? That's, no, that's correct. We, we, the best we can do with those other forms is keep our body detox, keep the antioxidants up, keep vitamin C levels. But look, look, going with iodine, and I'm, I want to blog about this later today, is it's very important to take salt and vitamin C in large amounts, not large amounts, but in you know daily chronic amounts to keep your antioxidant levels up and keep your detox pathways open for all this other form of radioactivity that comes along with us. But with a nuclear explosion, the number one form of radioactivity that's released in far amounts higher than anything else is radioactive iodine. How about glutathione, nebulizing glutathione on, into the lungs? What would you say that about that with sodium bicarbonate? I would say it's a fabulous treatment. I've done it with many patients for various concerns. I would say in this case, a treatment like that, I would consider for people in Japan around that plant. I would say as far as U.S. citizens, we'll have to see how, how big of an exposure it is. Exactly. And, you know, if the exposure is not that big, I would tell people to orally, you know, vitamin C, salt, drink water, keep hydrated, and iodine, and... I don't think we need to go to those extremes, but we'll see. We haven't seen anything like this in, in, uh, since nuclear power has been, I guess Chernobyl would be the only one. You're correct. And, you know, there, there, was, there was spikes of thyroid cancers and, and autoimmune thyroid disorders through the surrounding European countries of, uh, that were exposed to that downstream wind of Chernobyl. So we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult moment now. Yeah? This is things are the all the, the everything's going off the Richter scale, including right. general toxicity. I mean, we're already my my concentration through the years has been on mercury toxicity and uh, and uh, the removal of it through collation. And it's a sad moment, <laughs> David. It's it is. It's a terrible moment. And look, the, the other thing, the other interesting thing that I was discussing with my partner this morning after our tennis match was that you know I would assume that the Japanese took every precaution to prevent something like this. I mean, they you know they're they're very you know Western country, very educated, very you know innovative and you know up on new technology and look what happens you know that you just can't predict and you know we need our government working for us and protecting us and telling you know and and part of that protection should be to promote health and to promote ways to keep us healthy so if something like this happens we don't become devastated by the downstream effects of this and uh you know it's not doing that right now and it's just you know it's a uh, it's horrible.
it's a disaster. And, you know, we've got all these plants in the U.S. Um, you know, I question whether our plants are built as well as these Japanese plants were. I, I don't know that for a fact, but um, Japanese were concerned about this major earthquake problem since the beginning of their time. They built their buildings stronger, and I would assume they built their nuclear power plants stronger, and look, look what happens to them. Um, and uh, I was, people, this should be awakening this should be a wake-up call for all of us to look at our health, look at what we can do to keep on top of things. So when something like this happens, you don't have to panic. You've done the best you could and your body's in good shape coming into it versus, you know, trying to run ahead of this, which will never be as good a method as, you know, taking precautions beforehand. Yes, that's, that is so true. Well, thank you, Dr. David Brownstein. It's been a pleasure, even though this is not a very pleasurable subject to have to be speaking to you about, but uh, have to do our jobs, no? even on Sunday. Even on Sunday. Well, Mark, it's always good talking to you. Okay, and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care, buddy. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.